Welcome to Founders Field Notes, the podcast where you can learn from founders how to be founder. I'm founder and CEO of Klugonics Group, Jason Klug, and I'm a serial entrepreneur with a problem. This week's episode, we have Michael, founder of Wolf Optics. You can see these beautiful glasses I'm wearing here today. And this episode, once again, is sponsored by Klugonics Group, the company that helps people and businesses design, engineer, prototype, manufacture, and manage supply chains like bosses. We've made thousands of products, maybe not thousands, maybe a thousand. And we work with all different types of companies, different types of processes, and we can really help you design and create something that you're not only very excited about, but your customers will be very excited about and helps you get a, an ROI much quicker. Because if you design the right product that fits the market, that is very thoughtfully designed, well, very well made, you have a higher likelihood of being successful versus making something cheap as a short life cycle and skipping steps it's not going to have as long of a life cycle. So it's harder to get that ROI. So feel free to reach out to us on our website, www.klugonics.com. That's K-L-U-G-O-N-Y-X.com. Anyway, let's talk about Michael. Michael is a young entrepreneur that took some risks early on and has done a great job building Wolf Optics. You can see these beautiful glasses I'm wearing today. And I have been wearing since he gave them to me when we recorded. And I've enjoyed them. I've worn them golfing. I've worn them driving to the office. I've worn them sitting in my office recording podcast intros. I really like them. They fit my face well. My wife gave me a compliment about them, which is rare. So that's a good thing. Thank you, Michael, for these wonderful glasses. So listen in. Michael, following his passion, starting businesses right out of college and really making things happen. So then what started first? Were you an agency first? Or yeah. were you a goggle company? So right after just like some some background, I, I, I moved here. Uh, I'm from Alaska. Cool. I um, grew up there most of my life. My dad's in the military, so... We got lucky, just kept getting restationed to restation there. Mm -hmm. We moved when I was in like seventh, sixth or seventh grade to Illinois, which was one of the worst places ever. And Where then, in Illinois? <laughs> and I O'Fallon. Lived, oh, like, I lived in Naperville oh, yeah. as a kid. Yeah, so like yeah. St. Louis side of, okay. of Illinois yeah, is yeah. Where, 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 I, where I lived. We, were, we weren't there for too long. We went to Germany for a couple years after that. Cool. And I got to like in like middle school, high school, got to like experience like skiing the Alps and yeah, stuff. And that that's just kind sweet. of- that further embedded my love for the love for the the outdoors and stuff, mm -hmm. and then we got shipped back to Alaska for my last two years of high school. I graduated there, served an LDS mission for two years in mm -hmm. in Detroit. Um, that was freaking incredible, and then mm -hmm. moved here to Ski Bum. Yeah, and um, went to school here for a little bit. Started Wolf Optics kind of while while I was in school. It was at the really U or a UVU. Or? I was at Enzyme College. Oh. It's like a business college downtown. Okay. It's a private business college and mm -hmm. um, got in, got out as fast as I could. Like mm -hmm. took like 25, 26 credits a semester so I could just get out of there with an wow. associate's degree and just like That's, say, okay, I have a degree. I can just sure. go like pursue my own thing. And uh, so I was doing like some marketing because I was side studying marketing entrepreneurship. And uh, I got a job right out of right out of college because I just needed a, an actual job that made money instead of these like passion projects mm -hmm. that I was that I was really wanting to spend my time on. Got a job with Rockstar Energy um, as their marketing director for the state of Utah. And that company like ripped my soul out and just yeah. like corporate America, as, as corporate as you might think, these energy drink companies are not. Um, yeah. And I don't I don't know what it's like at other ones. I, I've, I have friends who work at like other bigger energy drink companies and they were happy mm -hmm. and uh, totally fulfilled there. But like Rockstar was just yeah, rock terrible. Stars, they've always been the <laughs> underdog, though. I feel like right uh, underdog, and they're perfectly happy being there. And they sure. they don't want creativity. They don't want ideas. They don't want suggestions. Yeah. They want you to like just be a nice little rule follower. And mm -hmm. I I I did not fit well with the company culture. Probably mm -hmm. other people would, and that's that's totally cool. Um, 
I, I really don't have a lot of animosity for that company anymore, but they were horrible. That you just got like, some didn't. experience, though. I got some really cool experiences. That's and good. I, I, I did get to network myself quite a bit when I was there, but I lasted there for two months. Yeah. And like my my <laughs> okay. my wife is incredible. She like she like just kind of realized that I was just like not in a good place. I was super anxious, got mm-hmm. pretty depressed and um just I think we both were just like, yeah, I'm I'm a lot happier when I'm working for mm-hmm. myself. So mm-hmm. I got out and started doing marketing a little bit more aggressively and like put it put a lot of time into my eyewear business. Mm-hmm. Um, How long ago was that then? Um, so I graduated college in 26, end of 2016. Okay. Um, or not 2016, sorry. Uh, that's not accurate. Uh, 2018. Mm-hmm. I, I came to came to Utah in 2017. Um, I was kind of done with college in 2018, early 2019. Mm-hmm. And um, early 2019 is kind of where I started to really like launch my launch my brand more seriously because I, I, I took a class in, in college about importing from China. It was mm-hmm. just like a random, like, cool. that sounds interesting. And it was, a, yeah. it was one of those once a week classes with an adjunct professor mm-hmm. who was, the adjunct professor was Brad Bonham and he owns Walker Edison I Furniture Company. Dude, he's such a baller. I, he I freaking me, love that he guy. He let me drive his car. <laughs> Dude, he's so awesome. He's a great yeah. guy. Yeah. So he would just come in and he would like drive to school in his Ferrari, just like yeah. this little business school and, and, teach for an hour and he would just like one-on-one with everybody in the class. There was, there was probably only 10 of us. It was the last class he's ever taught. And I yeah. just happened to be lucky enough to be in it. And he's just That's been such awesome. a he, mentor asset. Great dude. He, he yeah. uh my the so Durai home my my brand yeah. that's in the warehouse in the back there. Mm-hmm. Uh I hired a CEO to run that cuz I had to like step back from it cuz it just got too big for me to like do that and my other businesses. Yeah. And she I got her from Walker Edison. So she I I grabbed her right after the sale. Yeah, right after right Perfect after they sold it off. That's yeah. that's a I'm 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 sure that Brad Bonham pumps out some freaking all-stars. Oh yeah, like. he, 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 yeah. It, well, and yeah. she was at Walmart and Amazon before. Nice, but yeah, he had he, he was he's great. So I've got That's to good. connect with him a few times, and yeah, um, yeah, he's super friendly, down to earth, but also really sharp, and yeah. yeah, So That's cool. So then you're you figure out how to import goggles. Yeah, so I actually figured out how to import. I was like still a little fresh off the off the mission experience, right? Mm-hmm. So like the only thing. If anybody knows about LDS missions, the only thing that you can really wear that's different every day is like a tie. Mm. So I was like, I'm just going to import some ties because that's the cool. only thing. I, that's kind of like, I didn't have a ton of ideas at the time. Um, and I was just kind of learning about like Alibaba and these like, like how to connect with factories. I was like, let's just get these because they're cheap. I know I can get them for free, mm-hmm. um, like in terms of samples. Mm-hmm. And um, I, I got like a whole bunch of samples and like sold some ties to the to the to the school and like, <laughs> like with some branding on them. And so you do like some subtle uh, hustling on the side of your mission. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It was, it was, it was kind of, it was kind of fun, but like, it, like, yeah, Brad, Brad just like taught me how to deal with factories, how to, how to find products and stuff like that. And I, I was working at a ski resort also at the time I was working Which at Park one? City. Oh, I worked yeah. at Canyons. Nice. Yeah, I worked at Canyons too. When I moved here, that was the I ski bummed it for a year and worked at Canyons. <laughs> this, this is That's in the exact thing that I did. It was awesome. <laughs> I, I look back and like that year was stress free, easy going, best powder days of my life. <laughs> Cause I would get, I was, yeah. uh, I would, uh, manage like the dark side. So the bubble, oh, heck yeah. uh, condor, uh, sun peak, you know? And basically yeah. because I was like, you know, not just like a lifty bum and I actually could communicate, you know, I was able to like work up quickly to management to where I was managing those lifts. And all I did is give everybody piss breaks, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so I just lap all day. Yeah. And the best thing is too, is like when you get up there, you would, I would get like three, four laps in before opening. Yeah. And it's absolutely. just the, the best laps of my life still today, you know, are, were those days because I would have like wide open powder fields. Yeah, because you get up there at like 6 a.m. Yeah. And the and resort like doesn't the open for a couple hours. Oh. And it's like, it's the most beautiful. It's silent. There's no one there. I, 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 I really would like see that. a moose just chilling and like, yeah. it was outstanding. Like best, uh, best way to like welcome into Utah. That would have been 2011, 20, 
Yeah, 2011, 2012 season. Yeah, mine was 2017, 2018 yeah. season. And I, I, same thing, like I wasn't just like this, I felt like I had like something to offer you outside move of up like, quick. Yeah, and yeah. so I was just like, they they put me in charge of the the magic carpets. Mm-hmm. And I freaking loved that, dude. Everyone, the nobody, basic canyons? Yeah, nobody wanted yeah. to do that because yeah. it was like, they were like, no, Easy. I don't want to freaking deal with kids all day. Yeah. And I just love dealing with kids. Like, they're funny. And yeah. like, th- when they fall, it's less serious than somebody falling off a freaking ski lift. True. Like, it was yeah. so chill. And most of the days they would send up the, they would be like over staffed at mm-hmm. the base for the teaching school. Mm-hmm. And they would just like send a couple guys up there to help me. And we would just like each take like two hour, three yeah. hour ski breaks. So you it get was plenty so of good, dude. laps in when you work there. Yeah, such low stress too. Like yeah. I, I think about that time of my life of like this, you know, kid coming fresh off his mission in, mm-hmm. in college, like taking kind of classes that I thought were pretty not not so challenging. And um, and I suck at school. So that's maybe tells you Me how too. easy the classes were. I dropped were. out of college just so you yeah. know where I'm at too. Yeah. <laughs> I made it to my fourth year out of like would have been six and... Nice. No, no. I, I, well, I had like 18 hours left. I guess I was pretty close. It was actually my fifth year now that I think about it. Uh, but yeah, I dropped out. Yeah. I took all the engineering classes and the classes that were interesting to me and then left the history and the literature and the stuff that I probably should have used. But yeah, I didn't. <laughs> no, that's, that's what I thought was cool about where I went to school is that it was, I, I got a degree that I didn't take any general classes at all. Mm-hmm. I took all really focused, like I took finance classes, I took marketing classes, I took yeah. general business management classes, and then I, I didn't matters. have to take anything. I, if I had to take an English class, I probably wouldn't have taken it and I wouldn't have gotten mm-hmm. my degree. Because yeah. I was just like, That's what how I the was. freak like, am I doing here? Yeah, I, I would like, I would, you know, the drop day would come, you know, and I'd be like, yeah, I'd be in like manufacturing technology and CNC or like learning how to program CNC machines and then like CAD classes and stuff. Yeah. And then I'd have like English and I would drop that one and just like, you know, have a great semester. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It didn't help. Waste with, of time. But I didn't need the piece of paper anyway. You yeah. Know? yeah. The piece of paper has has become, I, I've never used it. Yeah. I've, I've picked up pretty decent sized clients. I've, mm-hmm. I've they don't been able to grow that. my business decently. They don't freaking give a crap. A yeah. client, they're like, let me see your degree. Yeah. yeah. If you want to get an actual job, yeah. degrees are degrees are important and sure. they're, they're becoming even more important because it's competitive. Yeah. Because it's really competitive and yeah. everyone's going to school. But like, if you're just wanting to start your own thing, degrees are just useless. Mm-hmm. Do what, do what Jason did. <laughs> go and, yeah, and you go too, and, right? Go and take the important <laughs> classes and dip yeah. out. <laughs> Cause, yeah. Cause you could get a lot out of those. Like, of course, you know, it just sucks that it's like to make it like you, to like show that you did it, you have to get the degree. Yeah. Versus the way I had to show is by doing, you know, but at the end of the day, it's way more valuable. Yeah. Like if you could, like I thought Weber was neat how they could like, they had this like build your own degree program. Yeah. You know, but you still needed all the core stuff. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, like what, what Brad Bonham did, we were just talking about him. mm -hmm. He was like sitting in like a, African studies class and he's mm-hmm. growing this like massive furniture company mm-hmm. and he it just always goes he was like one day I just it's like what am I doing here and yeah. he just got up and left <laughs> and uh, that's kind of what I did I, I was in a programming <laughs> class and I'm very mechanically minded <clears throat> yeah I don't I and I didn't understand it and the professor like made me feel dumb in front of the whole class yeah he's like all oh, you mechanical engineering students just have to get this and it's like I'm not the one choosing to be here, yeah. you know, and I'm sorry, I don't understand it. You know, your job is to teach me how to understand it. And I remember just being like, well, F this. And I, and I walked out of the class and then I went to the, uh, registrar's office and I demanded, I get my semester's money back and I made them pay me back and I dropped out. So I got my whole tuition back and I Good. used that money to move <laughs> to Utah. That's awesome. I used it. The, the, Thing that the thing that school actually did really well for me mm-hmm. is that I was getting my first order of goggles and I had just gotten married. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was like, man, I need money. Like, I need more money than I have. Well, how did and you get money to get the first order of goggles? I <laughs> I got my um, fafsa some money. Oh, wow. And put it, I sent it to Awesome. China. Love it. I don't, I don't even know if that's legal or whatever, but it was, but yeah. I was in school. So, and, I, I did like you were pay learning, for a lot of my own stuff right? and I was totally learning about something, but I, I took, I took uh, the, the money that I got for school and I had like 
signed up for all these obscure scholarships. So mm-hmm. I just kind of hustled like I That's got school great. for free. That's great. Um, and just like there was all these random like entrepreneur scholarships, night mm-hmm. class scholarships, these like ones that nobody ever applied for. And I only got them because I was the only person who That's applied great. for them. That's great. And so I, I had school for free and, if, and you get a check for whatever you use for FAFSA. So I was like, well, if I can make it so all of my stuff is paid for, all of mm-hmm. my books are paid for, everything like that, then the school just cuts me a check and I can yeah use that to kind of jumpstart my business. So, That's awesome. Yeah. It was a, there, there it is. So then you get your, you, how many did you order? You So you find an off the shelf one. Um, oh, these, these are the, the new versions. Yeah, right? these are the Can new I versions. See them? Yeah, of course. So, so you, I'm guessing you, you, you find a supplier, you get some samples, you like yeah. what you're seeing. And then did you customize it a little bit? I customized it a little bit, but it was the first ones we got were very much like, okay, these are high quality, but I don't know how to design like products. So um, we, uh, so like the, those slides These come outriggers? out. Yeah. So they, the, yeah, those things pop out on both sides oh, okay. and then you just basically bend the frame and the lens peels off. Oh yeah. Um, Magnets. Yeah. And then the Very straps nice. are also interchangeable on those. So, I mean, that's like what the big dogs do. Yeah. Yeah. That is, it's pretty it's much a nice what the big... looking lens. You got the plastic layering Yep. in between it versus just like the foam and stuff. Yeah. It's polarized as well. So it's a, yeah. it's a pretty like that, that specific pair goes like crazy. Like we do, we still do a lot of, um, onsite activations, mm-hmm. try and go to as many resorts as we can try to go to all these events. Mm-hmm. And those are the ones that go fast. There's, there's also a, a huge value in that. Like a lot of business owners are just like, no, I'll just sell everything online. But there's no, something you, about you like selling your stuff customers. in person. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's really valuable. Um, and we learned that kind of early on and just, it's, it's a part of our business and we're not going to let it go. It's, so how many did you order on your first run? The first run was, uh, I think I ordered only just like a couple hundred. Yeah. Um, That's nice. I gotta, they let you get that like small yeah, quantity. Yeah. It yeah. was, it was a lot of like getting people to send me as many samples as possible so that I could really like test them and beat them up. Mm-hmm. And, um, and then finding one that would allow me to do a, yeah. a pretty small quantity because I was just like, I, I didn't know what I was doing. I was just yeah, but that's a, doing that's, it. That's yeah. great though. Like yeah, I would always recommend like when you're starting a business from ground zero to not like because you as soon as you deplete all that cash on inventory, yeah, you don't have any cash to experiment on marketing. You know, yeah. so getting two hundred is a great yeah way to like position yourself to start. Yeah. It was two, it was two or three hundred pairs, and I split them up between two models, mm-hmm. um, and those we did a. Uh, I remember we did an event pretty like right when I had gotten those and it was shred fest downtown. Oh yeah. Just this big, like at uh, Liberty park. Yeah. At Liberty park. They yep. set up like a big rail jam and oh, stuff yeah, on that little it. hill. It's, cool. it's it's awesome. And we went there and I was like super nervous. I, I paid him like a thousand dollars so I could be, so I could have a booth. Pretty good. And I was risk. Like, it was, it was, I, I had like, I like called my mom, called my dad. I was like, what do you think I should do this? And they were like, do you think you could sell them? And I was like, I, I don't know. I don't well, what were you selling them for at the time? Uh, s- between like seventy five and hundred bucks. Okay. Yeah. So, so you sell like ten pairs. Yeah, solid price That's point. That's very affordable. Totally. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I definitely was like, I had, I always have this in my mind, like, okay, if this event costs us this much, this is how many pairs of goggles yeah. or sunglasses we need to sell. And I got there and we emptied the bins. That's just, great. They were all gone, and I was like, "Well, that's legit crap." Like yeah. I just ran out of ran out of goggles, but mm-hmm. it was this like really good. Um, it was that was a moment early on where I was like, "Okay, there's something here. Mm-hmm. Um, this isn't just like a, a you know a side hustle, and it's still growing a lot, and it, mm-hmm. so we still have a, a lot to do to make it um, kind of where I see it going." But it's validation, um, right? You it, felt validated. Definitely. Yeah. yeah, those those moments of validation in in the early stage of a business is is are, are the, so vital. I yep, can't stress that enough. Yep, it's yeah. like it's it's like takes a big weight off. It does. Yeah, yeah. And you didn't do a Kickstarter or anything, or no, no. I uh, so I I posted about the the goggles and was like, hey, kind of jokingly, like if anybody's interested in investing, like totally, like mm-hmm. not not actually looking for investors, but my. Grandpa hit me up and he was like, what do you need? He was like, tell me about this. Tell me about your business plan. And he he was like, he was like, I think this would be a good way for you to like learn to pay people back. And like learn to to get that. No, my grandpa was, um, 
short story about my grandpa. He he wasn't there for my mom's entire life, and mm-hmm. they met about fifteen years ago. And he's just like the only. He's the only like as as a as a military family. You just like don't have relationships with your extended family at all. Oh yeah. But he's like the only grandparent that I have a relationship with now. Yeah. But he like, you know, reentered reentered my family's life because my mom found him and just like, he's been a, he's been a a really incredible asset to my life but he's uh navy retired and then um he was he's a retired police officer he just like lives in florida like every old retired person does but um he hit me up and he was like what do you need yeah let me give it to you and just like pay me back and learn how to did he do it as a loan then yeah he did it as a loan and then the first time i tried to pay him back he was like he was like keep it in the business he was like nice keep it in the business spend it spend that money on something else yeah and like just you know, keep growing. Yeah, yeah, and uh, there's there's no like set expectations, but I mean, I, I definitely know that when we're when we're doing well, he's gonna be. You know, I always just when when I eat my 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 little village and community eats as well. It's, it's mm-hmm. that's that's important to me. So, mm-hmm. um, yeah, but he he was awesome. My dad gave me a couple grand, and I paid him back. So, yeah, um, that's that good. first order of goggles, it it was. I remember like walking out of my office at like 2 a.m. and I was just like looked at my wife I was like I just spent like 12 grand on, on ski yeah. goggles and That's she was not, like I, I oh mean, my god you gotta think too like some yeah. of those uh like building a hardware software product you know like um totally you know I mean you you drop half a million bucks before <laughs> yeah. you even have inventory you yeah. know just on development and all that stuff so you, I mean 12 grand is what a safe and smart first business, like business to start with. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, like no, it's, it's, a, it's a good, it's a good, uh, that was definitely a good direction to go. Yeah. As a super broke college student, it was really scary yeah. at the time, but I look back, back on it as like, okay, it's that was perfect. A good risk. Yeah. Good, uh, like, like I, I, I definitely felt like I was like being super risky at the time and, and, and it feels like not, not so much now, but it was like, it was a, it was a good move. Yeah, yeah it was, it was that's good. awesome. Yeah. That's a good. That's a good way to feel Pan looking out. back at it. Yeah, I I one time worked on a company that wasn't mine. I was I had a day job. So after I moved here in 2011 and where'd 12, you move from? Uh, from Georgia. Oh, okay. Yeah, and I moved around a good bit too growing up. You know, yeah. through like middle school and stuff. Yeah. Um, but I. I worked at a day job with this guy named Scott Paul. His company makes these tablet and iPad enclosures. They're like like that that black thing there. You put an iPad in there yeah. or a tablet, and then you had a card swiper and stuff. So I made like B2B business enclosures and stuff. And on the side, I met this dude at the working at Canyons that wanted to make ski poles. And I was like, yeah, I can engineer that. So I got to like start this ski pole industry or company with this dude. And the amount of failures and mistakes that I watched him do on his dime was so valuable for me. <laughs> I mean, yeah. no offense to him because we were like grinding and young and figuring it out. But that was way higher risk because it's like, one, I don't think we validated enough. I don't think we asked enough customers and stuff. I don't think we were listening to the customer feedback because mm-hmm. they had like bottle openers in the baskets and stuff and like all these like bells and whistles and stuff like camera mounts and screwdrivers and stuff, you know, but at the end of the day, the skiers are just like, yeah, I want a lightweight, cheap pole. Perhaps unnecessary stuff. Yeah. So yeah. It was, and, and I, and no one drinks bottled beer on the mountain. They drink canned beer. Yeah. So I was like, why do you need a bottle opener? You know, yeah. So lessons learned, but like going through that and like seeing it, what caused it to fail and whatnot, it was uh, so valuable. What was that company called? It's called Char Poles. Okay, cool. Yeah, the terrible name too. I didn't come up with that, but yeah, it's not great. <laughs> it's not great. Uh, but yeah, it was. Uh, I look back at that too and was like, you know, yeah. If I didn't do that, how would I have done things differently? Yeah, I would have failed on my own project at some point. You know what I mean? Yeah. So no, and the, the cool thing about about business is no matter what you're doing, even if your business, it, if, even if the business itself isn't just outright failing, mm-hmm. you're like failing at little things every day. Oh yeah. And yeah. like, I think the probably the best advice that I that I hear kind of often is a uh, just fail and fail fast. Yeah. I think that's just, uh, and get over it and move forward and yeah, don't do it again. Yeah, exactly. Put something in place. Totally. 
Yeah. So that's great. So then you're uh, now moving forward, you launch it, you get it to market, you're selling through goggles. The, I'm guessing you realize it's seasonal, right? Definitely. So it's like the, it, <laughs> yeah. so how does the next summer go? And then it, is that when you do glasses or no, does that so take the, some time? The first summer was dead. And mm-hmm. I was like, well, that's okay. Like I have my marketing business. Mm-hmm. And I, I was more like focused Which is on great. building that. So yeah, consultancy. Totally. Yeah. And mm-hmm. I was, so I was doing like a lot of organic um, social media marketing, mm-hmm. um, content. I like the content side of stuff. There's just all sorts of different things that I was kind of getting into and learning about and just figuring out and doing, picking up clients. And yeah. Um, then the next ski season picks up and I'm like, okay, well, I have some inventory left over, but I need more. Um, so ordered up some more goggles and kind of used, obviously like put more money into the business and that that next winter went really well and then the sunglasses came around that next summer where I was like okay we can't that's smart we we can't not <laughs> do, we, yeah. we need a product that or we need products that sell year round yeah and sunglasses have taken over the business like really yeah like crazy so that's we great. like rebranded kind of quickly into Wolf Optics not Wolf Goggles so we have. Our website's still Wolf Optics and Wolf Goggles. So like it did yeah. just go to the same place because obviously we totally. started as Wolf Goggles. Mm-hmm. But um, I was like, sunglasses, the first order we did were actually of these ones. And mm-hmm. they uh, they went pretty crazy the first time I did them. We got like so much good feedback. Yeah. Um, and these are like uh, cyclists and stuff? Yeah, or like you, mountain you, biking and trail yeah. running. Yeah, they're um, sleek. They work with a helmet, I'm guessing. Absolutely, yeah. Same supplier. Do you find a new supplier? Uh, di- yeah, different different factory. Um, and then those ones those ones come with like multiple lenses, so um, mm. you get Did, like a wh- whole bunch of value. For, what does this thing do? Is this like fold up or something? Um, it it can, but it's not like super. It's not like crazy important. I know your product guys, you want to, but you can totally bend it and it like it comes off. But that's actually more for like a custom customization. Oh, and it actually makes it so the so the sunglasses have more pieces to them. Yeah. So if anything ever happens, they're really durable. Yeah, you can. But if anything ever happens, you can piece. replace small pieces. That's instead smart. of, um, and it doesn't like look and janky. You, you found these off the shelf. Um, I found something close to them off the shelf. Okay. Yeah. And then did you do some modifications then? Yeah, modifications. Mostly just working with the like product designer that they had there at the at factory. The factory. Yeah. And I was like, hey, can you do this to them? Hey, can you use this this certain type of type of plastic to okay. to make it? Um, you know, can you use tier 90? Can you do mm. this to the lens? Can you, and so it was a lot of like customizing and kind of changing the, change the shape of the arm a little bit. And, yep. um, cause they were a little too straight. Um, yep. so th- those were those, yeah, those pretty much, that's great. Something close to them came off the shelf and I was like, okay, that's close enough. Yeah. Um, I can, I can modify that without, um, doing anything, you know, too crazy with my lack of, lack of knowledge. Um, yeah. But that's a great way to start. Yeah. You know, and you can, I mean, factories definitely have resources, especially when you have a good starting point like that. Yeah. Uh, you can leverage it. Jeez, and you can do like Illustrator and stuff and send them, you know, yeah. visuals and directions and stuff like that. Absolutely. And my, my wife is a graphic designer. So okay. she, if I needed something kind of more complex, I could just be like, hey, yeah. could you kind of communicate this? Or mm-hmm. um, like, could you kind of help like, color schemes and like that kind of stuff. She was, she was really, really helpful. And, um, yeah, my, I mean, I wouldn't be where I am without her, but Mm. none of my businesses would be anywhere without, that's great. Without her like support and her just design knowledge. She, she has a really, really good eye. So um, I mean, my wife and I started to ride together. So nice. And she's the same, you know, graphic UX. Um, and she actually now works for Google, full time but um yeah because once it, the business got to a certain point she's like okay that's too chaotic I, yeah. want, I want an easy day job so of course she gets a job at google doing ux and i'm like yeah easy that's crazy <laughs> <laughs> now yeah, behind every thing. good entrepreneur is the spouse just freaking yeah killing it and whatever they're doing it's, it doesn't doesn't matter if they're like if they're just you know at home watching the kids or mm-hmm. it's whatever it's I valuable like. that there's the the when they can do the graphic design and visual design oh, and website and all that yeah. stuff too. It's like not that's why I married her, but yeah. she, uh, that was, you know, an added perk of, of finding a woman yeah. that I, that I could, that I fell in love with. It was just like, 
we were really compatible on the business side of things. Yeah. So, so, so if you're looking for a wife and you're, or if you're looking for a wife and you're an entrepreneur and you're single, like just yeah. find a graphic designer, go to the graphic design school or whatever. <laughs> there you go. Figure it out. I don't know. Unless you're a graphic designer. Unless you're a graphic designer. Then go to engineering <laughs> school or something. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. So then, um, so then what else is going on? You got, you, you, you launched with some glasses the following summer, you become an annual year round business. Yeah. Was this like when COVID was hitting then? Yeah. 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 So COVID was hitting kind of hard at that point. Um, the outdoor sports are going up. Yeah. Right? So that's probably helpful in a way. Or it no? was. Yeah. It, it was helpful and challenging because, um, like I had, I had buddies who have, who have, who have other businesses whose product were just like, was just sitting at long beach on a boat. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I was just like religiously, like I, I, I had to pay more and I had to, it, it ate our margins a little bit, but I yeah, shipped freedom. it on a plane. Yeah. And I was like, it is what it is. Um, mm -hmm. Whatever I need to do to get it them to me fast. Or small enough. And yeah. Yeah. We were lucky though. We, we timed our, we timed our shipments and, and when, like, if you remember when Rudy Gobert got COVID mm -hmm. and everyone was like, oh crap, the rich people can get it. And yeah. like, like <laughs> Tom Hanks got COVID, like right. that kind of stuff. And people started freaking out. Um, we had we had product that like arrived that that week, mm. and so we were restocked for long enough that um, during that like downtime where everyone was wasn't doing anything and mm -hmm. the economy basically halted, mm -hmm. with the exception of toilet paper yeah. and and bottled water. <laughs> um, yeah, we we kind of sat on our product and just waited to like go pretty aggressively at, at this, at this market. So yeah, at that point it was just, it was just me and like my wife has helped me a lot, but, um, we, we grew quite, a, quite a bit during COVID. Yeah. Not necessarily as well, much as I feel like I want back to, but outside though, right? Yeah. Yeah. When people started going back outside and we kind of realized that, all right, well, all these, all these little events that are happening, we can totally show up at those and mm -hmm. whatever. And a lot of them got canceled and whatever for COVID, sure. but, uh, but you're, you're, you're doing, Direct consumer. Yeah, doing our online ads. side of things. Our, our our website blew up during that time. Yeah, and uh, we were really focused on content. We were really focused on on influencers, and so mm -hmm. we had we we experienced quite a bit of growth on our on the digital side of things, just because it's where everyone was. Yeah, and they didn't selling sunglasses online is actually kind of complicated because mm -hmm. people don't like buying stuff that they're going to put on their eyes and on their face. Sure, sight and scene. Yeah. Um. So that's that's always been challenging. That's something that we're still um, faced with. But uh, during COVID, people just if you put up a good brand and had nice pictures, people mm -hmm. were just like, "Yeah." I'm so, down. <laughs> what do you do to combat that? Can you do like AR testing stuff yeah, so that's, with iPads? That's, that's what we're doing. Uh, yeah. That's that's what is, uh, that, is that? Exi though I know, like, uh, does Oakley do that? Yeah, I believe yeah. they do. Um, a couple of big, a couple of the big eyewear brands have those. Like you can try them on, sure, um, on your face. Like, I mean, that's a good way to, you know, get around that. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, you know, it's not good for it's not good enough for for everybody, but it good enough, it's good enough for most people. It's good enough for our our clients who are sure. all pretty much our age. Mm -hmm. Like people are totally cool with spending money online mm -hmm. as long as you put up a like I said, good brand, good product, and mm -hmm. um, we have our like return rate is like the amount that people actually return product is super low. Yeah. Yeah. People don't really. Yeah. What's return the, what is it at? Happy. Isn't the average is like 26%, right? So yeah. Ours is like 2%. Like people nice. just don't return. Products. That's a Darius. Yeah. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. People, people don't that's return good. the sunglasses. People love them and we have like yeah. a really good warranty that takes care of them. So that was something that also kind of during mm. COVID I was like, well, I see all these companies like, uh, you know these these uh that you probably get ads for all the time like shady rays blenders um far out there's all these there's that pure e-commerce i don't think brands. i get them because i never search glasses yeah the pro but probably <laughs> not but if, if you ever search for sunglasses online that's yeah. that's that's what you'll see okay. and um those are like the pure e-commerce um, brands, and I know yeah. that some of them started in different are ways. They but they are more lifestyle, or are they also sport. Very much kind of a kind of a mix. Yeah. They, I think that they were mainly lifestyle, and they went into sport. But they all have these like kind of interesting warranties, mm. and so I don't want to be like them, and I've never want to be like them. Mm -hmm. But I want to be a mix of these like e-commerce brands that are kind of killing it in that space, have a really good warranty, have a mm -hmm. price point product, and these brands like Smith and Oakley, who have a really awesome brand that people want. 
to wear mm-hmm. and don't feel tacky wearing. Yeah. Um, but also I'm hitting a price point market that like yeah. people feel comfortable spending a hundred to two hundred dollars on a pair of sun- pair pair of uh, goggles, mm-hmm. which is totally normal. Mm-hmm. You know, Smith and Oakley for these ones specifically, these Maglock and goggles, they will charge you four fifty for them. Oh yeah. And um, you know, we're we're at the two hundred mark for those, and yeah, they come with reasonable. another lens, and they're polarized. Like, mm-hmm. so I two wanted lenses. to. Be, so it was it was t- kind of during COVID where I where I started to hone in what is what is this brand, mm-hmm. what's it going to be, um, what's our warranty look like, mm-hmm. where do we fit in the market? Because yeah. I I'd never really thought of these like higher level things. I was just selling goggles out of a tent sure. on my website. No, so, I love that. That's yeah. like so you dug in and and really had an opportunity to focus on your strategy and holistically what you're doing. Yeah, absolutely. so then started. I'm sure that then really helped your your marketing, your messaging, and all that stuff. Right? Yeah, it did. It, and those are things that we're still working on and aren't perfect at. And uh, you know, we still very small team, like we were talking mm-hmm. about before. Um, so I, I take on a lot of a lot of the responsibility, and you know, yeah, kind of divide and conquer whatever we can get done, gets yeah. done. And uh, but. Yeah, it helped us kind of realize, okay, who, what is Wolf Optics? Mm-hmm. Who are we as a brand? Who are we as a business? And like, um, I think that time where we were locked inside helped us like figure out who we were. That's great. Where we fit. So. And then what are you, uh, and then you're still doing the agency stuff as well? Yeah, um, still still focused on that. That's like my, because uh, I, I don't make any money from Wolf Optics. Totally, I, um, yeah. And I don't actually intend to. I don't. That, that's, I, that's how I roll with Daria. It took me a while before I actually started like taking money out. Yeah, it's, you know, it's not even it a. I'm, I'm patient. Um, I'm totally yeah. cool with being. Uh, if if uh, if it takes Wolf Optics thirty years to explode, I'm cool with it. Sure. I'm 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 in it for the long haul, and I. That's great. I've I've doubled down, and I I care about the business. I believe in it. Believe mm-hmm. in the brand. Mm-hmm. Um. So my my thing that pays the bills is I my marketing agency, and yeah. I last year. Um, almost a year ago today, the owner, uh, owners of ski resort up in Idaho gave me a shot, like doing all their marketing. Yeah. And I just like fell in love with that. Cause obviously I, I'm already in love with skiing. I'm already in, yeah. I already love marketing. And so just like merging the two, I was afraid that it was, wasn't going to mix well, just cause you never know how it's going to go, but it was just like, it's a dream. Well, it's very, um, it's, it's like not a bad way to be with, with like, you know, just you're just niche in your skill set with it. Right. So yeah. you target, and like you said, you said, hospitality and stuff. So now you're doing the golf side of things, ski resorts. So yeah. you're, you're now have both seasons, right? Yeah, and uh, both seasons and who needs to sell goggles and sunglasses? Yeah. All these places that... True, so you get in their shops These like sports stuff. experience things. So yeah, that's, that's, that's sweet. That's kind of where I'm at right now and I'm going after those things. Uh, just, it's it's complimentary. Yeah, that's um, valuable. You yeah. can balance them out. Yeah, and you get to you get to network yourself within the industry and like you know kind of saying that you're the marketing guy for a ski resort even if it's kind of small. Yeah, is a is a decent way to build a little bit of notoriety and yeah. so that's that's what I've been focused on and it's a uh, it's been good. If you're gonna if you're gonna do multiple things at once, I feel like they have to be complementary. You can't have you can't have things like it. I can I, if I was doing marketing for like I, I don't know like law firms. Mm-hmm. Or like, oh, that'd be terrible. Or like, plumbers yeah. or something that would make no freaking sense. Yeah, and and I feel like a lot of people would look at that and be like, this guy's just doing random crap all the time. Yeah, but when you start to look at like my <laughs> all of my friends, everybody you know, even my wife is just like, you're doing too much, and I'm like, no, I'm doing it. I'm I'm just I'm doing the same thing. I'm just doing it through different channels, and I'm Wolf is is the beneficiary of of everything yeah. I'm doing and. Um, oh, I get that. Yeah. I mean, it's same with, um, yeah, B2B service and then having a brand. And the I think the value that you get as well, when you're sitting in your agency shoes, yeah, you get to put yourself in the client's shoes in a way as well. You know, where Absolutely. You, so it's like, that's what's been helpful with deriving a direct consumer brand. And I work with a lot of direct consumer brands and then also like retail brands and stuff like that. And it's valuable because I could like, you know, everything down to like how they cash flow inventory and Absolutely. leveraging debt yeah. resources and then, um, you know, challenges with iOS updates and the paid advertising, totally. uh, what agencies to work with on running paid ads, all those types of details and are just things that I'm experienced with in trial and error. But then also 
you know, my clients' trials and errors I learned from as well. And the fact that we can openly talk about that removes that like service provider client type relationship for a bit. Yeah. And it's and it and it helps um I think it just changes the vibe of the relationship in a way, which is super valuable. It does. Uh, yeah. And then, you know, and then I can put myself in their shoes as we're working through projects. And then, yeah, it, it, I think it makes us better agency because of it. Yeah. So, absolutely. Advantage we have doing yeah. that. <laughs> I feel like what, what you said there, like the um, being able to see how things cash flow on, mm-hmm. on that side, like yeah. what because I'm doing marketing for this small ski resort, it's a small team. Like yeah. the the group of guys who are running, like I run all the all the digital marketing, everything. Mm-hmm. So um, I'm like in the room with these guys who are either seasoned professionals in the industry or just mm-hmm. like really awesome entrepreneurs. And, and they're all just like, it, I get to hear how the ski resort operates. Yeah. And how Which is money crazy flows. To think about. And how, and yeah. yeah, and how all the, like the seasonal changes and, and repairs. And I get to, I get to see a, a side of that that I wouldn't have been able to see. You know, I would have had to take a a, a job at a ski resort, yeah. kind of a higher level job at a ski totally. resort, and I would have had to have like actual um, education probably to get that job. Sure. So, like being able to, and they also have a, a ski shop, and so I get to understand how inventory flows. I get yeah. to know what their margins look like. I get mm-hmm. to see all these things that, as a guy who owns a goggle brand, are like way valuable so when i approach Mm. ski resorts when i approach these shops i know what they're dealing with already yeah i know how products flowing Mm -hmm. um just generally based on where they are and it it's yeah like the footprint and stuff and how much revenue it generates for that footprint versus you know and then you can go and pitch it exactly how they want to hear it exactly i get like basically they tell me this is what we want to hear from people and i get to be like sweet i can just take that to a shop and And say exactly all the things they want to hear it's got to be pretty similar with a golf pro shop to a ski shop at a very similar yeah Yeah. and because it's it's effectively the same business yeah you you know you have day passes you have season passes Mm -hmm. you have a shop you have a a -hmm. a gm or a course pro i Mm -hmm. guess is what they're 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 called pretty often um, and you want those impulse buys? Before. Yeah, you have people spending thousands and thousands of dollars on yeah. their gear, mm-hmm. um, and then you have people spending like thirty bucks, and exactly fifty bucks. Yeah, you have people bucks. shopping at DI, going to yeah. get in their gear, and then you have people yeah. coming in and yeah, you know. or just grabbing their last minute thing on their way out. Exactly. Like, oh shit, I forgot my sunglasses. Totally. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's, it's effectively optics. the same business. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's great. Yeah, yeah. Or oh, I forgot my goggles at home, or my goggles were fogging up last time. I need some fresh ones. Exactly. You know. Yeah. Um, so that's been, that's been really beneficial. I'm, I'm super grateful that the owner of that mic is just a freaking mm-hmm. baller. He used to be in, in lead gen in mm-hmm. like 2008. And so. he just buys a ski resort. Yeah. He just bought a ski resort and mm-hmm. is coolest guy, coolest family. And kind of being able to be in the pretty heavy growth phase of this, like little that's ski exciting. resort is a, it's like a passion project. It's and, such a blessing. Yeah. That's cool. I, I was so do you so go up? Do you that. travel up there often? Or I guess you work remote. Or you... Yeah, well, I mean, most of my jobs remote, but I I try and get up there as often as mm-hmm. I can. He has Just some know, FaceTime. Yeah, there's always like a place for me to stay up there. So that's nice. If I can go to Idaho and like mm-hmm. he, he lives, you know, they live right on the Snake River. So cool. Uh, yeah, it's 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 cool. It's a it's a, it's a really good relationship, and mm-hmm. um, I, I I owe a lot to to Mike and and his family and the whole Kelly Canyon. That that like small ski resort just changed my life for mm-hmm. for, for the better. That's and, great. And has helped me because I was just taking on whatever marketing clients sure came along. Yeah, Whoever they, was going to pay, I was just going to do it. Yeah, you found and, your niche. Yeah, and I was just like, okay, you this like is, to be in. This is what I want to do. If I'm going to keep doing marketing, this mm-hmm. is it. Have you talked to a lot of the local golf courses then as well? I have. Yeah. Which ones? Like, are you working with any that I know? Um. Not yet. No, yeah, yeah. It's, it's 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 a work in progress. Because um, you probably but it's, get but one, it's happening. Because they're all like the munis, right? Like yeah. you get like one, you get all of them, right? Yep. So like Bonneville, Glendale, all those Salt Lake ones. Yeah, you probably have to go after all of them, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll uh, yeah, we'll see what 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 comes of that. Um, but I feel like what I've gotten. So I do the Wednesdays men league, men's league at Bonneville. Yeah, I feel like you should try to do a men's league because you get really get to know the pro pretty closely. Yeah, that would be sweet. 
Because um, you're the one, idea. you're interacting with them via email, yeah. and then you you know when you check in, they start to remember your name. Yeah, they keep your card on file, so it's more of just like, hey, I'm here, great, playing <laughs> nine today. What's good is that I suck at golf, yeah. and so I go with my buddy Brady, who's really freaking good, mm -hmm. and he'll walk me into the shop and be like, "This is the course pro. This is my buddy Mike. Yeah. Like these are the I've been wearing these sunglasses golfing. I love them. They're awesome. That's great. You should pick them up. And since he already kind of has notoriety, that's they don't have to watch me golf. And if they watch me golf, they might change their mind. <laughs> so, so that's yeah. been a good, that's been a really like beneficial, um, it's, I don't know. It's just all about relationships. That's a, good, that's a growing market, just the golf industry in general for totally. selling your shades. Yeah. Yeah. And most, most, uh, like obviously the course pro. Mm -hmm. controls what goes in the shop. Mm -hmm. um, and bigger places have like their own buyer. Absolutely. You know? yeah. yeah. And so it, it gets complicated as you go up the chain, but these small, these, these small little uh, golf yeah. courses, they sometimes don't have sunglasses. And if they do, they have like one single brand. Yeah. And like, are they just cheap, cheap, cheapos? No, Rose Park, for example, they only yeah. carry Oakley. Oh, really? And I'm like, well, Bro, this I, is I Rose Park. Like People actually, are spending $150 on a pair of sunglasses. I'm, I'm trying to think of the I I don't know if it was Rose Park or it was another one, but I've shown up and forgotten glasses and just bought stuff off the, like the gas station rack, you know, that yeah. they have. And I think I paid like 32 bucks. I want to say it was Rose Park, but I can't remember. But yeah. yeah. And those I keep in my bag now. So when I forget, you know, they're just there. Yeah. <laughs> and they're yeah. just cheap. We, uh, but, and, and so I've, it's, it's been fun getting to these new sports. So like, we're going after baseball, we're going after mm. softball, we're going after, um, golf. And yeah. so the different, like when you're designing a product or when you're mm -hmm. designing a lens more specifically, it's actually really important what type of lens you're suggesting to people, yeah. um, for these different sports. So like, um, in baseball, the way that certain polarizations in the lenses react with the ball on grass as opposed to the ball on dirt mm. as opposed to the ball like a, a catcher's sunglasses mm -hmm. totally different so yeah, like wow. when it comes to like golf you want somebody to be able to see a really small white ball yeah. <laughs> or you know whatever color ball and so the way that you polarize your sunglasses the way that you manufacture your your product is you have to kind of be specific with the mm -hmm. with with how you're manufacturing it for a specific sport. So that's changing our business quite a bit now where I'm like, well, these lenses actually work a lot better with sunglasses. So we need to use this type of film. We need to use mm. this, um, this material or whatever. And it's, it's been, it's been a lot of fun um, yeah. dealing with a, a new thing because the sport's new to me. And so the sport's new to the business because it's good, for, it's for all intents and purposes, I, I am the business. <laughs> me and my me and my business partner are the business. Yeah. So whatever we're interested in, whatever we're we're liking is like, oh, you know what? This would actually fit really well totally. with what we're doing. Yeah, and then over time you'll get better and better at of it. Of course. Yeah. 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 Like I use the Oakley um Holbrooks. The yeah, but the golf specific lenses. Yeah. And they and they they do cause the ball to pop more in grass, so it's easier to find it and whatnot. Yeah. Um which I thought that was interesting, but you can learn from what they've done. I'm sure. There's Absolutely, <laughs> I bet that it's it's fun having um, these bigger companies that you can almost you can almost for to to say this correctly, you can almost make them the enemy, but mm -hmm. also you're just like adoring them and learning a lot from them. Sure, and like you yeah. know studying what they're doing and being like, oh how how is how is Smith how is Oakley shifting in this way, and. uh you know what? What's next? Um, they put your own twist. Totally, but at the same time, you're like, you don't want to buy from them. <laughs> and yeah. it's, it's it's almost hypocritical because you're like, you know, taking some inspiration, but you know, mostly you're just, you know, listening to your customers and seeing mm. what they're doing, and then studying your competitors and mm -hmm. seeing what they're doing. And um, I, sometimes you hear business owners be like, "Don't look at your competitors; it's not important." I'm like, you gotta pay attention. So dumb. You have you have yeah. to have your you have to be listening. You have to have your eyes open and see what's happening in the Absolutely. industry and what's shifting. And yeah, Tyler sold yeah. me those nice. from cash. Yeah, he used Tyler, to work Tyler at Oakley. Yeah. Freaking Tyler. <laughs> He's selling Oakley's. Yeah, yeah, he was my first episode. Yeah. For, uh, no, he he used to when he worked at Oakley, he got me a couple glasses. He gave me a pair when I first met him that would have been like what? eight years ago or something or seven years ago and, and he I didn't still tell you them. sell you a pair of wolves no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> we've yeah. all been around for half that time <laughs> yeah so i wonder if he'll change over for you and no he's awesome and, and dylan dylan his brother i think he's still the oakley rep for the for the area or no it's uh it's his older brother yeah 
uh, Dylan does uh, marketing website stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. And works with Cash, obviously, yeah. too. Yeah. Yeah, that's a really His cool other brand. brother that has the golf ball company, uh, Uncommon. Oh, yeah. Is, still works with Oakley, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the yeah. side hustle. And we, yeah. so for Pit Vipers, you know, we did these goggles for them. Yeah, they're, they're MX goggles. Yeah. These yeah. are, we did all the engineering and stuff. Oh, sorry. <laughs> From ground up and whatnot. I did it on purpose, actually. I really respect <laughs> Pit Viper. And I, I know they're, I know they're team quite well. They're, they're, they're they've great, been really dude. cool. It's, we see them pretty often. Yeah, I work closely with John over there and he's fun to work with. But so many moving pieces, dude. I have to, yeah, those outriggers like, are, uh, those are tough to get the geometry right. Yeah. For like all the helmets and whatnot. It's a ton of work. <laughs> yeah. So that was a good engineering project. It was challenging. Get the ergonomics of yeah. a face. And actually what I did when I I did another project where I had to make something for uh, a human face and I got from the CDC uh, head forms of, of different, uh, for developing um, masks that were um, like properly sealed on all the different face shapes. Yeah. And from 3M, because they made the whole, uh, this is even before COVID and stuff. Interesting. Where I had to make, I was making a scuba mask, like one of those full face scuba masks or yeah. uh, snorkels, yeah. you know? And so I acquired all of these mod head form models. So we were able to repurpose those to get the face dialed. Wow. Right. Yeah. yeah. I just We just recently did a whole bunch of research and obviously actually researched on faces, but yeah, um, a whole bunch of like, I, I dug into these really like deep diving how the average American female face is shaped. Yeah. Because we came out with a smaller version of those sunglasses. Mm -hmm. So, because those are just a little big for um, some mostly like women's face mm -hmm. faces. So mm -hmm. I like dug in, just learned all this, all this information that was like useful, but just like so insignificant outside of this very specific. <laughs> this, yeah. I mean, like I know the average width of the average American yeah. female and of, of their face. And I just like, it doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah. I think it matters we had for like, this one thing. I mean, we had like 20 head forms, so it's impossible to make a pair of glasses that works with all 20 of those. Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, but, and then, uh, Asian faces are flatter and wider. Yep, you and have to do the stuff. low bridge. Um, yeah. stuff. That's something that we're working on. So it's, it's kind of excited for like, it, cause that's been something that's been on my mind for a while because I have, um, just, a lot. We have we have Asian customers who are just mm -hmm. like we want. Yeah, it's kind of. We want something that too. fits our face. And normal glasses, normal goggles do not fit them. Yeah. At all. So you have to do a low bridge version. Yeah. Um. So that's something that we're. So you can get into Japan right and China and all those places. Yeah, absolutely. J Japan's one of my one of our kind of within the next year. That's the. That's one of the markets that we're going to pursue pretty aggressively. Are you going to do it through distributor? Or do you think you're going to go direct, or what is your game plan um it's the hard that's the it's hard a, question it's a good question um so i i basically just asked a couple friends who are familiar with japan and maybe mm -hmm. have like served their mission there that kind of stuff okay. and i was like that's helpful you want to help me yeah. go after this i'd, I'd like I, I don't know what i'm doing but you control the um, brand more that way exactly yeah yeah and i can i can kind of yeah but that's that's been on our on our minds quite a bit but mm -hmm. japan is like that's I haven't skied there yet, so I'm like I need a reason to go. Yeah, you gotta go. <laughs> so test I was like, well, out. if we were selling goggles there, I gotta be yeah. there. Because <laughs> I go to China a lot, obviously. Yeah, and um, you know, I've always wanted to. I, every time I go, I'm like, oh, I'm gonna stop through Japan, you know, on the way, and like hang out there for a few days and check sure. it out. But I always end up having to like do like 10 days in China or 14 days or whatever. And it's like, I don't know if I can add on to that. Yeah. That's a lot of time. Do you ski or snowboard? I snowboard. Nice. Yeah. I can't go forward. <laughs> I prefer to go sideways. sideways. I grew up skateboarding. So it's like, it's just sure. more natural for me. That makes sense. I, I was, I was raised by a, by definitely one of those, one of the, my, my dad's incredible. He was definitely one of those uh, guys that grew up skiing. Mm -hmm. And uh, so maybe had some, some, unnecessary animosity yeah. towards snowboarders. <laughs> I hear it. Yeah, um, and then it I moved really... here and every, my entire crew was just from Southern California. So all, they all snowboarded. Yeah. And I, I was one of like, there were some days where we'd have 20 guys coming out mm -hmm. to a resort at a single time because we're all in college and we we're just like skip class, whatever, who cares? Sure. And um, I was the one, only skier? I was a skier with like 24, 25, yeah. whatever. That's snowboarders funny. and every once in a while another skier would show up and i'd yeah. be like yeah I think thank it's, you it's pretty blended here it is yeah 
Yeah. yeah, I do like how those cultures have kind of mixed, they've, at least with new generations mixed it up. and stuff. Yeah. So international expansions on the future. What what else are you working on? Yeah. Well, we and like obviously more products and keeping to expand and diversify. Exactly. And, yeah. I mean, um, fishing. I, I mean, oh, being yeah. from Alaska, I grew up fishing, so that's that's one of the that's the markets market. that we're that we're going after, and it, it is a good market because people. It's another market where people just spend a freaking crap yeah. ton of money on their like somebody just spent. Twelve hundred dollars on a fishing pole, yeah, and a whole bunch of money to get up to Alaska or get to these destinations that people like to fish. And do people um, then pick on? You know, will they then be influenced to buy a pair of glasses because the lens is specific to the sport? Then I'm guessing is the yeah, more common. Yeah, absolutely. And we have we have specific lenses that whenever anybody asks for specific sports, but especially fishing, because that's something that I've done my entire life. I'm yeah. like, yeah, use So this, you could speak to it. Use an amber or use a green polarized yeah. lens or use a use a really light gray polarized lens and mm-hmm. that's how you're going to see through the water better. And then do you make ads that target that specifically and market that feature or, you know, how yeah. are you? That's always something I wonder how detailed you can get with it. Yeah. Your, um, see? So when you're niching down and like how you're marketing, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. When you're like this ad or this um, content is really meant for these people. Yeah. And then you can just be like, it's it's easy to rattle off the. It's I mean it's easy for me to rattle off the the benefits for for specific sports yeah. for particular products or particular lenses because mm-hmm. if I, I wouldn't sell some of our like we have a Wayfarer sunglass that's cool pretty sporty. Um, here actually have a pair. Yeah, I like, and that's the style I always always go for. Yeah, so it we fits have my face. We well. have these ones, and like I would never sell. We have some like really reflective lenses. I would never tell anybody to fish in them. So it's like this kind of specific. I don't know. It's good though. These are them. That's like that's kind of our base here. These are for yeah. you. So you can open them. I'll let you experience. Oh, I them gotta for keep the first them. Time. Yeah, sick dude. Yeah. Um. Yeah. But our content does get specific. You can get pretty honed in on it. Yeah. And these are $80. That's very yeah. reasonably priced. Yeah, it's not too bad. It's got the rubber nose pieces. Which yeah, are and those adjust. And then the the ends of the arms also adjust. There's a metal like piece that goes through there. Oh, you and can swap them? Yeah, something that, something that we've changed um, recently on those and that we're continuing to develop is that sometimes those rubber ends wear out a little bit. There's a metal rod going through them yeah yeah um and so we either replace them or whatever for now oh, but that's nice and we're working on some more durable materials for Those that are clean yeah i'll wear them golfing in the morning tight sweet yeah that, that's our best seller those those the sunglasses right there. Those, those go crazy yeah because they're very general you can wear them in lifestyle you exactly. can wear them sport yeah oh yeah. yeah so we have all these like sports sunglasses and stuff too good mix it's cool and some of them a lot of them are sold out because we just uh that's good. Yeah. So what what are some main uh what would you say are your main field notes you'd leave behind for other entrepreneurs? Man. I think a, a something today especially I think something that has shown up quite often um in as we've been talking is just like relationships. I would yeah. I would say that that's that's been my most important uh I guess like tool in, mm-hmm. in business is mm-hmm. uh, and I don't want to say that like I'm like I use people because I, I definitely um, believe in <laughs> you know yeah, providing know you value mean. for all, all yeah, you know, yeah. people but um, a good balanced relationship exactly yeah like but not being a relationship for the purpose of bettering yourself or for like like create selfless relationships where you're wanting to do good for other people yeah and that'll be reciprocated mm-hmm. um and, and that's like mentors. Yeah. That's with people you're working with. Exactly. Your, your, your parents, your, your, your wife. Yeah. Um, but yeah, p- just like make, make friends and spend like my dad always told me growing up, um, when he would see me hanging out with idiots, he'd be like, you become the average of, you know, the five people you spend the most time totally. with. And I think that's, um, there's a lot of truth and truth in that. And when you, when you spend time with, with people that, uh, aren't that whose lives just kind of aren't aligned with yours and you yeah. spend too much time with them. Obviously, you know, friends and family, you should love them regardless and shouldn't just like cut people out. But sure. Like starting to 
if you're starting a business or if you're thinking about starting a business or if you do st- own a business, um, I feel like you you notice it a lot then when you spend time with people who just like they are wear, wear good you influences down. and yeah. wear you down and, and yeah. spiritually and mentally wear you down mm-hmm. that it that it affects you pretty pretty significantly. So yeah, I um, agree. I've even like, had negative clients that I've had to cut out. It's same. Yeah, and, absolutely. And it's like, of course, I'm the bad person for doing it, but yeah. it's like from the back end, I'm looking at my team and how they're receiving stuff and uh, their project and like, you know, are they like, how profitable are they? But then at the same time, I'm looking at how the way they handle situations and, you know, come after my team and stuff and how it wears on my team. And you have to like, yeah, be like, well, wait a second. Like, this is not like my team's not stoked whenever you call. Yeah. And, and, and I like, I get that it's like a mutually beneficial thing for us to be working together. It should be. But when I look and see a team member worn down, then I feel like it's my right as a bit or my, my duty as a business owner to be like, okay, I have to change this scenario for my team member. Yeah. Or I'm going to lose a team member, which is way more valuable to me than one client. You know what I mean? So yeah. that's always something. Yeah, I totally agree with that. And it's it's sometimes like hard where you have to like rip a Band-Aid off. Uh, but, you know. Yeah, I actually yeah. think it's better when it's... <laughs> I like it when I can... Like as I've had clients in marketing that are just nightmares. And everyone's yeah. had a nightmare client if you've ever owned any sort of agency, yeah. product design, marketing, whatever it is. They're angry, they're um, mean, they're not... I you know. freaking love it when I can just... Because yeah. when, when you have a a good friend or even, even if, you know, a, a, a relative or whatever it is that's, that's in your life, it's near impossible mm-hmm. and, and a lot harder to, to, to distance yourself from that person. Yeah. But if they're a client, I can just be like, yeah, you have that choice. Deuces. <laughs> we yeah, don't like need this you. This hasn't worked out, yeah. you know? And I, I, to, I, I never leave on a, on a bad note. Yeah. I always try and be very, very sure. like, like, clear let's about wrap like this up. We'll wrap that up. Here's yeah. another resource you could look at. Yeah. Whatever. Here's like, maybe another another what... place that that might might work better for mm-hmm. your needs. But like we we just don't work be- work well together. And I feel like um, it's better for everybody it's, long term. It's, it's way better for everybody long term, and it's yeah. better for them long term. Like mm-hmm. if you, if you want to do what's best for them, probably you know certain agencies just don't work well with certain clients. And, sure. And certain clients are just absolute freaking nightmares and won't mm-hmm. work well with anybody. Yep. So agreed. You know. Well, that's, good that's a good feel note. Cut people off sometimes if they're not, if they're not, I don't know. Surround yourself with people that make you a better person and yeah. and, and be a person that makes people or better. You look when you're forward to them. receiving their calls. Exactly, <laughs> and like that, that's that's the thing is if you get really stressed and anxious when somebody calls you, yeah. um, and then think about how people are receiving your calls, mm-hmm. receiving your text message. Do they mm-hmm. get stressed when you call them? Yeah. Do they get anxious when when you reach out to them? And if, and if if that's true, maybe maybe look inward and be like, okay, mm-hmm. what, what do I need to be doing better? So. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, well, that's great, man. And and anything else you want to add? Well, I mean, I will, we'll list all your social and everything. But yeah. is there anything else you want to leave behind? In my last interview, I, I interviewed. Uh, we were talking about it, uh, Colby Bauer from Thread, mm-hmm. and I felt like they've done a great job. Exactly, and he left. I'm gonna I'm gonna just kind of rattle off his answer to a mm-hmm. similar question that I ask at the end sure. of my podcast. Um, but he said, when you are, cause they just started the carry on foundation mm-hmm. with thread. Yeah. Um, surrounding mental health and, and, and kids and such a, such a cool, cool thing that they're doing over there. But when you work in business to, to make the world a better place, not like, obviously you're a business owner. Money is important. Mm-hmm. Income is important. Right, cash flow is important. Mm-hmm. Um, paying the bills important, but when your end goal in business is to is to do good, um, whether that's philanthropy, whether that's bettering the lives of your employees, mm-hmm. when you're when you're focused outward in business, he he was like, "This is pretty powerful." And I don't know if you're religious or not or anything, but like uh, he was, he just said, "God becomes your business partner." Mm. I was like, "That's freaking, that's my best piece of advice." I'm I'm, I'm I believe in God, and mm-hmm. I just think that that's that's yeah, probably my enough. that's like my best <laughs> that's the best piece of it's not even my advice. I took this advice yeah. from somebody else and just rattled it off here, but like um, I think that's true in all aspects of life. Like if you're just trying to do good, 
trying mm-hmm. to bring good into the world and like help other people and and you know looking outward uh there's a couple businesses that do this really well but um yeah you know it's work for a lot of people exactly <laughs> so yeah. it's good yeah, why not? it's fair enough yeah sure cool man well thanks for coming yeah dude thank you for having me on yeah dude Appreciate it. all right there it is michael wolf wolf optics wolf media he's like me has an agency with his skills that he's good at delivering a good quality service, but also has started a brand with those same skills. It's always fun to relate with entrepreneurs that have the same idea as I. We could do the service immediately and start generating revenue right away with time and materials. And then with those skills, if you're able to start a side hustle and build a brand, that's a great combination. Because then you can sit in your client's shoes and see things from their side of the table, which helps deliver a better quality service. So always great to relate from that perspective with other entrepreneurs. All right, some good field notes from Michael, which definitely could get behind. So one of which, early validation for your product is vital. Definitely important. I like his story about him showing up, taking a risk, setting up a table, and then moving through all that product. What a great and very personal way to get face-to-face with your customers and, and validate what you're working on very important for starting a business. And, and doing it like that is much lower risk way than some traditional methods or doing like a Kickstarter and stuff, which take a ton of time up front and paying for making content and online presence and you know paying for ads and stuff like that. Doing it at a physical event where you know your potential customers are going to be right there in the flesh is a fantastic way to start a business. And that's why, you know, farmer's markets and stuff like that are great. Referring back to Jared's podcast, his episode, if you wanted to go back and listen to that, you know, he he said that Etsy is a fantastic way to start a business. Very similar, right? I almost feel like Etsy is the farmer market of e-commerce in a way where it's easy to set up a store. It's easy to run a small business out of and, um, you know, reach those customers in a, a more direct way. But yeah, that, that, that event that he went to and started selling his goggles, what a great way to start a business and get that early validation before he really dove in head first. Something that we hear consistently is fail and fail fast. I agree. It's better to fail and lose a little bit of money and do it quickly so you can learn quickly and make pivots up front than to, you know, drag it on and make it more painful in the long term. Definitely agree with that. Very common uh, note from entrepreneurs that can vouch for that being valuable uh, because it's okay to fail and it's okay to learn from it, you know, and it's better to do it quickly and up front than to make massive failures later on. If a business owner says they haven't failed, they're either lying to you or they're not a good business owner. <laughs> Prove me wrong. Make a comment about that in the uh, below, please, if you disagree. If you're doing multiple things at the same time, make sure they're complementary. I agree with that as well. For example, for me, Dry Home, consumer product brand, um, you know, I built its own team. But at the end of the day, my other businesses, Onyx 360 and Klugonix, are service providers to Durai Home where I don't take away from each other. I just treat it like it's a regular client. For, of course, I probably give it a little bit more attention than other clients. But it, it's not like I'm doing things that take me away from the core of my my development and manufacturing business, Klugonix. So... You know, same with him, with his his marketing and his his focused marketing with the golf courses and stuff like that. You know, it's not distracting him too much from what he's doing with the marketing at Wolf Optics. Uh, but at the same time, the fact that he's walking into pro shops and having meetings about marketing and growing their golf course, it's really easy to show him, hey, check out these glasses I have. Here's what my wholesale looks like. So the fact that he can use those opportunities to gain in multiple ways is a is a great way where, you know, he can save time and effort and and only have one point of contact to possibly do two different types of business deals, whether it's wholesaling his his glasses or his goggles or marketing, you know, what they do, whether it's a ski resort or a golf resort. Very smart niche. And it's cool to hear about how he came to that conclusion. And the fact that he is focusing on that niche, 
I think he's going to become more successful because he's able to hone in on it. So Michael's podcast, check it out, Outdoor Innovators. He interviews a lot of founders like I do, uh, focused in the outdoor space. Please check out Klugonix, all of our social media. We're all over the, you know, on all the standard platforms, except for not really active on Twitter, which apparently is now called X. Check out our website or give us a call if you want to create your next product at 866-515-3338. Thanks for listening. See you next time. 